So this is a very long question. I always kind of think about translate word problem when I see long questions like this. Let's read it and see exactly what we're being asked to do. So the first sentence here says a county school board in a certain state is proposing a start time of 7.30 a.m. for all high schools in the county. Okay, that makes sense. A sample of 100 high school students was selected at random from all high school students in the county. Okay, so it makes sense. We select 100 kids um, at random from all the high schools in the county. The next sentence, the selected students were asked whether they approved of the proposed change in the school start time and 70 students responded that they did not approve of the proposed start time. So I'm gonna assume 70 did not approve, so NA for not approve, and I'm, assu I'm assuming that 30 students did approve, so A for did approve. I don't know, there could be some number of you know undecided in there, but I'm gonna go, go with this for right now. Uh, which of the following is the largest population to which the results of the survey can be generalized. So let's just take a break and think about how do surveys work? What is the purpose of choosing anyone at random to ask questions about? And the purpose is always in life and definitely on the SAT. The purpose is basically we don't have the resources or maybe the time, which is also a resource, to ask every single person this question or to have every single person that we care about in this population to complete our survey. So instead, what we're gonna do is we're gonna randomly choose a subset of this larger group. And we are hopeful that the information that we get from that subset will give us information about the group as a whole, right? So it saves us time, it saves us resource, and we don't have to take that time to ask every single person, but we still get the same information out that we would have gotten by asking every single person. So with that being said, the fact that the sample came from the high school students in the county, right, then the largest, the largest population should just be all the high school students in the county. So let's look at the answer choices. Choice A, the 70 students who responded that they did not approve of the proposed change. That to me doesn't make any sense. Like that is not a population to which the results of the survey can be, can be generalized. If anything, we know what they said. It's not a generalization at that point. Like we know that 70 students did not approve. There's no generalization necessary. Choice B, the 100 students who were surveyed. Again, we know that out of the 100 students surveyed, 70 of them did not approve, 30 of them did approve, so there's no need for a generalization. Choice C, all high school students in the county. Now here is kind of what I was mentioning earlier, in which case we only spoke to 100 students, we assume there's a whole lot more students, which would require a generalization, right? If we're gonna say, for instance, that 70% of students do not approve of this new start time, we're kind of saying, based upon this study of only 100 students, we're going to now say that 70% of all the students in the county do not approve. So I like choice C. Choice D, all high school students in the state. I don't think that's fair. That's obviously a larger population than just the county, but I don't think it's fair to say I'm only going to choose students from this particular county where the school start time is going to change only in this county and then take their results and say, okay, this applies to the entire state, even students who are not in the county, even students whose school time is not gonna change, right? That it just applies statewide. So I don't like choice C, I think that's an overreach. And for that reason, I believe that choice C is the best answer.